Good morning, my creative friends. Welcome to Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. I am Dr. Minette Riordan, and I am, as always, super excited to be here <clears throat> with you with my little bit of a froggy voice early in the mornings. Haven't done a lot of talking yet this morning. <clears throat> And today we are going to dive in to one of my favorite passions, which is Zentangle and mindful mark making and slow drawing as a form of meditation and creative play that can really help us to slow down, engage here in the moment, bring more present into our day and just help us really get over some of the overwhelm and some of the anxiety that may be building from things happening in your life, things happening in the world around us. There's a, a lot going on and I'm going to mute myself for just a second and clear my throat. So pardon me. Good morning, Tori. Glad you're here. I hosted a networking event in my home last night and I ate some cheese, which I don't eat a lot of dairy and this is why. So apologize for my little bit of froggy throat this morning. But here at Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette, we're all about exploring creative practices that serve us for really that personal growth, self-development, finding more joy in our lives, enjoying an hour together of just mindful, creative art. Sometimes it's about technique. Sometimes it's about going deep into inner process. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Blanca. But today I want to play with some Zentangle, um, in part because I love Zentangle. I just came back from a wonderful event called Tangle You, and I'm always inspired to do more Zentangle following those epic events. In fact, I think that's where I met you, Leslie, was at a uh, Tingle U event, if I remember correctly. So yesterday, if you joined me, we had a lot of fun doing some watercolor doodles. I was playing with some new watercolors that I got. I was doing some pattern making with the watercolors. But when I look at these designs, for me, they just cry out for having Zentangle patterns added to them. And I love practices and processes where they can extend over multiple days. It's why I love our Mindful Patterns membership and our Mindful Patterns practice is because often with those designs, I am able to really extend that creative play across multiple, multiple days. Good morning, Julie. Julie was here in my home yesterday for our super fun networking event. I can't wait to see Le Leslie in person for our retreat coming up in a few weeks. And I do have one spot remaining for that retreat if anybody's interested in joining me in my studio in Loveland, Colorado, May 18th to 21st. You can just uh, send me a note and ask for some details about that. But yesterday I loved and I was going through all the different pages that I had played with yesterday. I really love this one and once it dried I love this sort of neutral palette loved the the composition of this one so this one is going to get some zentangle patterns added um julie i will send you an email with some information about the program thanks for asking or you can go to manette.teachable.com i'll put that in the chat here manette.teachable.com if I can type this morning, teachable.com, and uh, <clears throat> you'll find a list of all my classes and programs there. Thanks for asking. Happy to chat with you more about that. And so I'm going to set this one aside. Maybe I'll work on this one tomorrow because, again, this is a fun multi-day project. I can't believe it is Wednesday and we are well into 
may already, but I want to play with this design that I did yesterday that was a more abstract. So if you weren't here yesterday, you can go back and watch the watercolor doodle live stream from yesterday, or you can uh, just paint some abstract watercolor doodles in your own favorite style. I have too many things on my table here. And uh, paint along and then doodle along. You can do any of the processes I'm doing absolutely just on a blank sheet of paper as well. But if you're not familiar with Zentangle, Zentangle is a meditative form of drawing often done just in black and white with really simple tools, generally a micron pen. Today I have some little thicker nibbed ones. I have a PN, which is a favorite, and an O3. I also have a Uniball Air Micro because I'm always um, curious to see how different pens work over the top of different substrates. Not all pens are created equal. I also have my all kinds of black pens and my Stabilo Marksall and some brush pens, my favorite Higgins. So these are all here as well. So I might go a little bit wild with my mark making, we'll see. And on my last studio session, um, or my first studio session, we had a lot of fun with black and white drawing. So we're going to be using some of these same elements, but we're going to take it over our watercolor today. Good morning, Marion. Glad to see you, my friend. And um, I wanted to also give you a, a sneak peek. I had so much fun in my studio session yesterday morning. The studio sessions are free, stu are free sessions that are an hour long that are not recorded that I do on Zoom. And I started with just doing an abstract background in this sweet little dog just sort of randomly showed up. So I finished it after the call yesterday. There's a link in the description of this video to subscribe to my newsletter. And if you're on my newsletter list, then you get all the information about these free studio sessions where you get to join me live on Zoom in the studio. So I have these gorgeous cards here. This is a, a wonderful deck that was created by my friend Lynn Mead, who's an amazing tangler. I absolutely love her work. And she has created these awesome decks of step outs. You can go to tangledeck.com to find out more about Lynn's decks. They are fabulous resources for tanglers. And I pulled out some that were sort of ribbon-like this morning to play with. I won't take a lot of time to teach patterns, but you'll see me drawing some of these patterns as we go along. And I love using these for inspiration because a lot of times I get stuck just drawing the same patterns over and over again. And so sometimes it's nice to have a selection of patterns. So I have this beautiful page of watercolor designs, and I'm going to use this page as my string. So Zentangle is all about drawing repetitive patterns one simple stroke at a time. And the thing that I love about Zentangle, one of the many things, was one, it brought me back to my own creative practice in 2010 was when I created my first tile and discovered Zentangle. And I also love the versatility of it and how it has, even after almost, you know, what is that, 13 years, is still part of my regular creative practice. But what I love about the mindful drawing, whether you call it slow drawing, doodling, tangling, so many different names for it these days, is that it helps us come right into the present moment. So if you're feeling anxiety, if you're feeling a little bit of overwhelm, just 15 minutes of putting patterns on page can help bring us into that mindful awareness. And I'm a lefty, so you're going to see me turning my page around a lot, but I'm going to start with this really simple pattern, which is called Ambler. And basically, this is almost like a spiral pattern. And I'm just going to imagine this string up here, and I'm going to draw these patterns pretty big. So this is a really simple pattern that looks like that. It has a little bit of an Aztec feel. I love it. 
and I'm going to vary where I put the initial opening of that ambler pattern so I get some different rhythm in there. And I'm just going to take my time adding pattern to this. I'm going to remember to breathe as I go. Again, you could do this just on any sheet of paper. Draw yourself some lines or patterns in pencil to use as a string. And I'm going to do one more here. And then when I've done a watercolor doodle, good morning Yvonne, like this one, I like to use the shapes that are here creatively as well. So I'm noticing I have these little dashed lines. Some of them are a little smeared. So just coming in and adding some lines around what's already there. So this is how I sort of combine Zentangle patterns, more traditional patterns, with just mindful mark making. And just again, enjoying the moment, like we did with our watercolor doodles today, there's no destination here. This is just a page in my art journal. There's you know nowhere that I'm trying to get to today. But I want to start my day off feeling calm and relaxed. And one of the things that I love about this practice is that I can be sit here, be sitting here just drawing, and I might pose a question if there's a problem that I'm trying to solve or my to-do list is feeling a little bit long, which it is. I haven't even finished unpacking my suitcase yet. I came back from Asheville Sunday night. My suitcase arrived Monday afternoon, and I hosted a networking event in my home last night, and my suitcase is still sitting on my bedroom floor. And I'm thinking about all the work things that need to get done. And so I might just say, what is my highest priority today? Or what would serve me the most today? And sometimes I might even write that question right here into my journaling. So the question that just popped into my head is, what is in my highest and best good? I can't write and talk at the same time. What is in my highest and best good to accomplish today? And I already spent some time this morning making a to-do list of all the tasky things I need to get done. And then there's what's in my highest and best. And so one of the things that might be in my highest and best is to make sure that I get out for a walk today. It's going to be 80 degrees here. It's going to be toasty warm. So I want to get out for that walk earlier than later. I have a few specific emails that I want to get sent today. And I'm thinking a nap might be in my future today. So it's not always conquering our to-do list, knocking things off. Sometimes it's what's the things that's going to serve us so that we actually have the energy and the presence to tackle that to-do list. So again, just continuing to add some patterns and some doodles. I'm going to pull my camera down a little bit lower. Move my cup of tea there. Sorry, I know that's totally shaky. I apologize. All right. 
So you can get in a little bit closer and see what I'm up to. And I'll just take a cup of sip of that tea. And I'm sort of looking at my design, getting curious about where do I want to go next. I have kind of this nice broad pattern here. So this is one of my favorite Zentangle patterns is one called Mirror. So I'm going to turn my page so it's a little bit easier to draw. And I'm going to come in and just do almost like the vein of a leaf all the way down this lovely shape here. And then I'm going to follow the edge of the shape over here as well, more or less. And I'm going to do that again up here. And I'm liking the way the, the, the PN flows over the top of the watercolor. It can be a little rough on an O1 if you love to tangle. You got to be careful using your O1 sometimes and have a gentle touch so that you don't destroy the nice little fiber tip. I really like the plastic nib on this PN. And then I'm going to come in all along this edge here, and I'm just going to put some little tiny orbs. I could draw orbs all day. And the slower we go, the rounder those orbs get. But they're orbs. They're not perfect circles. And if you have watercolor paintings lying around that you've done that you don't love, maybe didn't quite turn out the way you expected, try coming back in and either adding more patterns with watercolor over the top or taking a black permanent pen and adding outlines and marks. It can completely change the way that something looks by adding pattern to it. So the more that we play with adding pattern to our work, the more interesting visually it becomes. You guys have heard me talk frequently about making our art our own, adding our own marks. So I'm zipping along here pretty quickly with these orbs, which means they're kind of messy. But I'm okay this morning with just a little bit of messy. Also, when you start to practice drawing Zentangle or other types of mindful, slow drawing, Notice if you're gripping your pen, all of a sudden I noticed with those tiny little orbs, which is from a pattern called tipple. Um, as Leslie said, it's one of my absolute favorites as well. If your hand is getting tired, like make sure you slow down, remember to breathe, don't grip your pen super tightly. And then I'm just going to come in here and start to layer in a whole row of vertical lines, just slightly slanted. And I can vary the look of this a lot by how close together those lines are. And I'm not putting them super close together today. I had bought myself some fresh flowers <clears throat> at Costco when I went to get uh, stuff for the event last night and there was this hydrangea flower which was not very happy kind of smooshed in the center so I went ahead and, and pulled it out um, mostly because I loved the the pattern in the leaves and it reminds me 
of mirror when we look at it, when we look at how leaves grow, and I'm going to play later today with some gel printing with these, but we're just basically repeating those lines and patterns that we see in nature. And it looks like they have spray painted these leaves because there's lavender on the, the back of these leaves. So that was very, very interesting. But it's amazing when we start to just look around in nature for inspiration, right? That uh, all of the patterns are already there, right? And so we don't always have to work hard to find patterns. They're all around us. So start to notice, it's part of your mindfulness practice, is start to notice patterns around you. Notice the bricks in the sidewalk. Turn my tile so it's a little easier to reach. And I'm not going to worry too much about making my lines meet here because sometimes it, the angles of them, they get maybe a little further apart than I want, so I might go back and add some more. Think about what are the patterns that you naturally love to draw. So when I think about my painting practice and my art journaling practice, there tend to be certain shapes that I return to over and over again circles, squares, spirals. Are all shapes that show up again and again. And I love how simply we can have a page just start to come together and from something that, you know, is kind of interesting to me, this becomes something much more interesting, and I get to just sit here and be with my breath. There's nothing here but me and my pen. I come in here with a few little poke leaf shapes. In Zentangle vernacular, there are what are called our mac and cheese tangles, meaning the ones that we return to over and over again. And poke leaf is one of mine. I love to draw them. I love the way they look. I also love to just draw stripes. Like think about, you know, did you used to doodle in school on the edges of your notes? What were the what were the patterns that you repeated over and over again? And you'll notice I'm filling both the colored spaces and the white spaces in between as well. And you don't have to fill in every space, leaving some room for the eye to rest between patterns. We had a, conversations about this at, uh, I think it was Tangle You Online in January, about you know being the type of tangler who loves to fill every nook and cranny of a design and other people that draw big and love to have more open space. And there's no right or wrong. I love to tingle, so I often want to just fill every single space. And I'm just looking to see what I might want to draw next on here and I'm thinking maybe some triangle shapes might be fun but this one also has a nice combination this is called charts these are all official Zentangle patterns from Zentangle HQ so I'm just gonna draw some random triangles 
And I often just think about, okay, I've done a lot of round organic things. What could I do with some more squares or triangles? I always love to bring in some floral doodles. So I have this line of triangles and I'm going to come and I'm going to create an aura inside each of those triangles. And an aura is just simply adding a parallel line, like an echo around what you've already drawn. And then some beloved orbs in here as well. And notice that it has the orbs going from bigger to smaller towards the inside of the triangle. This just makes for some interesting visual movement on the piece. I also look at how much contrast am I creating? Do I need to add some more black in here to create a little more drama in the piece? But mostly I'm not thinking at all about the overall composition. I'm thinking about that question, what is in my highest and best to accomplish today? And self-care is at the top of the list. And maybe some breakfast. All of a sudden my tummy is growling. So just coming in with that mindful flow, letting the patterns find their way across the page. No destination in mind. This is an interesting pattern. I don't know if I've ever really used this one, maybe more than once or twice. It's called BB. I love it because it looks like a long line of books. And again, it feels very simple to draw, but I love the, the contrast of the lines. So I'm going to come in and add some of that one here. And I won't finish this page today. So a large page like this provides hours of mindful fun. And I love having things in progress, right? I love having things that, like this one will probably migrate upstairs. And that pen's feeling a little bit dry. So I'll try some. Big fat one here. Oh, well, that's easier and faster. I can be a lazy tingler. I have one friend that teaches and makes everyone use only an O1. And to me, that just seems to take up a lot of ink and a lot of time. And I use all the pens in my arsenal. So it's good to have some different nib shapes to try. Love this little stack of books here. Making them kind of wonky. They're not all the same height or even the same width. This is one that'll take a little time to draw. So 
So yesterday in our studio session, I talked about working on multiple pages at the same time. And I do the same thing with watercolor as you saw yesterday. I think I had three or four pages that are all now ready to have marks and patterns added to them. And it's great to just prepare pages to play and not always feel like we have to sit down to finish something, but to have a variety of things that we're working on so that we can work on whatever strikes us in the moment. Some days I wake up and I want to paint. Some days I want to color or do watercolor doodles. Sometimes I want to do some stitching. So having a few, not too many, but a few projects in process makes your little creative hearts happy. And what I know about being a creative and working with creatives for the last couple of decades is that we thrive on variety. We tend to get bored quickly. It's probably why I love Zentangle. Talk about endless opportunities for pattern making and using in a lot of ways. But when we have a few things to work on, we never feel boxed in. We always feel like we have choice and creative brains love choice but not too many choices. So too many supplies, too many projects on the go can get to where it feels overwhelming. And then we don't know where to start. But we can come back to that question and just ask ourselves in when we do have an hour or even just 15 minutes to sit down and play, just ask ourselves, which project would most nourish me today? Questions are our best friends, and they don't have to be journal prompts. You can take them to the journal. But sometimes they can just be questions that we take into our mindful drawing, into a couple of minutes of mindful breathing, If you love, so this is what happens when it gets kind of gummed up from the watercolor. So sometimes just coloring whatever, because it's a little powdery. This is piece right here seems to be flaking up quite a bit. So I'm going to come back over here with this uniball. Give me a flow of ink here. So having variety of pens at your disposal. And this feels like a nice one for some journaling, so I'm going to come in with a little more journaling. And I'm just going to answer the question, what feels in my highest and best today is exercise, Maybe a nap. And completing the top three things on my to do list. So that I have more time for art. And our own handwriting becomes like another mark on the page. I love how the blending, the handwriting, and the journaling, and the tingling, any time that I can integrate the different passions that I have, the, the happier that I am. And so even my morning pages are often full of doodles, or pages of coloring, 
lots of soul scribbles. I'm definitely liking this pen better. I have gone through multiple periods in my life where I was an active morning pages person inspired by Julia Cameron, but every time I return to that combination of art and writing and just looking for a different way to approach the page, Kind of trying to decide what to do here and what I'm feeling is I'm gonna just outline this and see it's kind of like the sort of wavy pattern. Maybe I'll come in and just draw some upside down waves here on the page. So looking for those practices that support and nourish your spirit, right? It's fun to learn the techniques. It's fun to make the pretty pages. For me, it's fun to work on canvas. But my mornings tend to be about what are those practices that are going to support, soothe, and nourish me so that I go into my day feeling calm, rested, prepared. I love adding patterns inside of other patterns. What's everyone else working on this morning? I feel like I'm off in my own little happy bubble of drawing patterns, babbling away to myself. And something like this just reminds me to come back to those practices that support me, right? And to think about where am I not spending enough time in mindful self-care? Where am I speeding through my life? It's a great question to ask. Where am I not slowing down and paying enough attention? In my business right now, it's time to sit down and do some planning for what's next, right? Instead of just doing the thing right in front of me, I always am happiest and benefit from making some time for thinking about what's coming so I don't feel rushed and last minute. Watercolors, watercolors, love it. Love it. Mary and I did one of these watercolor doodles recently, and it turned into a, a Mother's Day card for my mom. So, yep, they make great cards. And again, some of these shapes, I just love the shapes themselves. I'm just outlining the shape, and that's all that's needed. I don't need a fancy pattern. I could go back and add some stripes to these, but I really kind of love this little gorgeous ochre color. It's 
I want to just give it some definition. So it's coming along nicely. It's a page that makes me happy. Again, this is a page just for me and my art journal. Doesn't need to be anything super special. Although I'm, you know, looking at some of these areas and already thinking, okay, once I've done these beautiful patterns, how much fun would it be to come back in with some colored pencils and add some shading? So what I love about this type of meditative process is it feels like it opens and expands my creativity. As I'm thinking about these questions, as I'm thinking about the page, then I start to also sort of think about, well, what's next? And one thing leads to another. I might come up with a new class idea. I might come up with an idea to add to a painting that I'm working on. So I love this pattern snail that is basically a row of spirals with some little black spaces added to them. And again, I love drawing spirals. I've drawn them in watercolor here, so I'm going to go ahead and add some ink to these spirals as well and just let the lines that are there be my guide more or less And one of the things that I think is so important about our creative practice is turning it into a mindfulness practice. Slowing down, letting it flow into other parts of our day. Mindfulness is about so much more than just a sitting meditation, washing dishes, gardening. We came home to a bumper crop of dandelion, so there's going to be some weeding in my future. Writing, reading poetry. Allowing ourselves to just sit and gaze out the window quietly. To focus on just being in the here and the now. Humans tend to spend way too much of our time thinking about the past, worrying about the future. And the more we practice mindful self-awareness and presence, the less time we spend worrying about the future or agonizing over past mistakes. There's nothing we can do about the past. The future's not here yet. Drawing these patterns really big reminds me of our lesson from Monday where we looked at going from small to big in our pattern drawing. So this is definitely a lesson in drawing bigger patterns. Taking my time to ink these in, get them nice and black. And then I'm going to add some auras 
around the edges of these. I might only add one. We'll see how much room we have. So again, an aura is just an echo, a line that follows previous line or shape. And what I love about auras is that they create that spaciousness in a design and allow the eye to rest. So where before we don't see these black shapes under here as much, as soon as I added that aura, it's like I've highlighted these shapes and they stand out so much more. And again, it just creates that little bit of breathing space in our creative design. Which is a reminder to create that breathing space in our lives. I'm going to encourage you to find some time to just slow down today. Just slow down. Especially if you tend to spend your time racing from one thing to the next. Maybe take a little bit longer lunch. Linger over dinner. Take a 15 minute cat nap in the sunshine. Cats are so smart. I haven't been down here at all this morning. It means the birdies must be really active upstairs, having fun sitting in their perch watching the birdies. So that pattern created quite a bit of drama in the center of the page here, right? So we have a lot more delicate line work at the top and then it started to get bolder and then a little bigger and bolder and this feels loud and eye-catching it's interesting just noticing it and i'm wanting to bring some of that delicateness back from some of those drawings and again i'm just going to use the lines and the patterns that are here Got these nice leaf shapes. So I'm going to sort of repeat that mirror pattern from up here. Nice to have some repetition in a work of line and shape. It helps the viewer's eye to relax and tingle can often be very busy to look at and so using some white space repetition contrast can help tell that story a little bit better Don't be afraid to just make up patterns. There really aren't that many different lines and shapes when you take intro to drawing classes, you know, or often in Zane Tingle, they, they teach you, right? There's a dot, there's a line, there's a circle, square, triangle, spiral. There aren't that many different shapes and with just these few shapes we can draw just about everything. And in Zen Tangle we teach if you can write the letters I, C, O, and S, you can pretty much make any pattern, right? So we have our straight line and our dot, we have a curved line, we have a circle and then we have kind of our S shape and with these few simple shapes it's amazing how many different patterns and designs and these we can combine to draw just about anything. Drawing classes teach you how to break things down to their primary lines and shapes. So what I love about Zentangle is that it can help you to 
get better at drawing, but also at seeing. Like, what would fit there? What does my hand like to draw? And these also feel like they could be key pots. So maybe some of these are going to be key pots. There is a centangle pattern called Ina Pod. This is a simplified version of that since my shapes are small. I forgot to put the inner lines on that one, which it just gives it that different look. So I'm just going to add those lines around the outside. So we got a nice, big, fat, chunky one. It was amazing to see it tangle you every time. But this time, I think I noticed it even more, those moments when we were all in the room together and we were all just drawing in silence. And I love being in that mindful community space, which is really what our Mindful Patterns membership is all about, is that mindful creativity in community. and being comfortable, learning to get comfortable with silence, with our own, with others. We live in an age that is all about input and not enough silence. So I think I'm going to pause there. You get the idea by now about adding Zentangle patterns to your watercolor doodles, allowing this to be a mindful meditative practice, even incorporating journaling, using this as a thoughtful way to maybe find some answers to some of the questions on your mind or on your heart. It can be a way to approach the day and to just start your day with a little bit more mindfulness and gentleness in your day instead of getting up and rushing headlong into the day, finding what is the practice that nourishes and supports all aspects of your well-being. Thank you, as always, so much for joining me live. Thank you for watching the replay. Be sure to click that like button, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to get notified when I do go live most mornings, Monday to Thursday at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, which is 9 a.m. Eastern and 6 a.m. on the West Coast. I will be back again tomorrow with some more mindful art making. No idea what we're going to do, but I will figure it out before tomorrow. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Again, thank you so much. This is Dr. Minette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs, live with Minette.